So welcome to the, the third video of the Forefront Identity Manager setup. So in this video we look at the performing the, the prerequisition tasks required for the installation of the FIM 2010. and we will be looking at the installation of the FIM synchronization service FIM portal the reporting services okay, and password reset and password registration portals so first let's start with the creating the FIM service accounts so we need four service accounts so one user account is for FIM service purpose and FIM portal purpose one service is for synchronization service purpose to run the synchronization service and one service for the management agent service purpose and one service for the SharePoint service so the the FIM portal password registration portal and the password reset portal will be running on this account called as a SharePoint service the FIM service will run on this particular account called as an VE FIM service the synchronization service will run on this particular this so I'm just going to create these four services on AD environment So I'm giving AL V FIM service. They don't need any privileges on the AD environment. They, they can just be an normal user accounts with the least privileged. And the other account is called as a SharePoint service. So the first step which we completed called as an creating the service accounts. So the next step which is required, mailbox enable the FIM service account. So the FIM portal, the FIM application is going to send email notifications. So to send that email notification, the FIM service account needs to be a mailbox enabled. So I'm going to the exchange server. So I'm creating a new mailbox. So user mailbox, existing mailbox.
So I'm just selecting the film service. So the next step we need to call as and verify that the film installation account has a SharePoint permissions. So I logged in with an administrator account. So whether the administrator account has a permissions on the SharePoint. So go to the administrative tool. programs, SharePoint products, click on SharePoint Central Administration. Open the browser. Type HTTP colon slash slash. the server name. So the SharePoint site is being created. Go to the site action. Site settings. Go to the site collection administrators. So verify that administrator account. If you are using any other account, you can give it, basically give that account. So I am just going to add the domain administrator account over here. So if you are using any other account apart from the administrator account, you can specify that specific account and say OK. Then go to the SharePoint administration portal. Go to the monitoring. I'm sorry. Go to the security. So configure service account. Right. So the next step which we will do called is change the SharePoint application pool account to use the SharePoint service. So go to the SharePoint administration, 
Central Administration, click on Security, Configure a Service Account. So select the portal here. So we see code is a register a new managed account. Select the portal. Film service. So it's going to restart. It just need to restart the IA service to reflect this particular changes. So reset the IAS. So the next step which we need to call is in configure IAS to use the, the SP service for Kerberos ticket decryption. Open the IAS manager. So you can close the shared point administration. So click on configuration editor. System web server security authentication. And we can see code as a Windows authentication. So use kernel mode is equal to far and use application pool credentials is equal to true. And click on apply. and reset the eye. So we did the configuring ISS. The next step which we need to set called as an the SPNs for SharePoint service and the FIM service. So open the command prompt, run as administrator. If in service, HTTP bar, the server name, ALV FIM app 1, and the service account name. Then specify the fully qualified domain name. So the HTTP need to be registered using the FIM SP service, the SharePoint service which we created. 
set SPN hyphen N slash the server name. Now here we need to give the FIM service account name. So the earlier we gave the for HTTP the SharePoint service account for the FIM service we are going to you called as a give FIM service account. The next thing, same thing, the fully qualified domain name for the FIM service. So now we have registered the service principal names. The next step which we need to call is delegate the Kerberos authentication for the SP service and the FIM service. Okay. So to perform this activity, log into Active Directory. So I'm selecting the Active Directory VM. I'm going to the Active Directory, click on View, Advanced Widget, select the SharePoint Service Account, Property, so you'll be able to see code as a delegation. This option will come only when you set the SPN value, Delegation. So trust this user for delegation to any Kerberos authentication. So trust this user for delegation and select use Kerberos only. Click on up. Same thing on the FIM survey. Say apply and OK so that the authentication will happen for the user. So the next step is to start the SharePoint administration. So by default this will be in a manual mode. Go on the app server. So you need to log into the server where you are going to install the FIM portal, FIM service or where the SharePoint is being installed. Administration, by default it will be a manual, put automatic and start the server. So these are all the steps which need to be performed before installing the, the FIM application. So this we call it as a prerequisite tasks. Now let's move ahead and install the FIM synchronization service, the FIM portal and everything. So go to the installation folder, the setup folder, where you have a FIM software. So click on FIM splash.
So the first service which you need to install called as a synchronization service. So once you install the synchronization service, then we install this FIM service and portal. So click on install synchronization service. Click on continue. Select the forefront identity manager synchronization service. Specify the SQL Server location. So specify the SQL Server database name, server name, and the SQL Server instance name. So as we're using a default instance name, I'm giving a default instance name. Configure forefront identity manager synchronization service evolution. Enter the credentials of the account under which the forefront identity manager synchronization service will run. So we need to specify the the FIM synchronization service account. Password and the domain name. So these are the groups which will be created by the synchronization to enable the firewall rules so that the communication can be installed. Click on OK. It's going to ask you for the folder to store the backup key. Key. I'm just giving a sync service. Go and finish. So restart the server once the synchronization service is So now we have completed the installation of the synchronization service. So now run the from service and portal. So once we install the synchronization service, the next step which we need to call is install the FIM service and service portal. So select the FIM reporting, so I selected the FIM service, FIM reporting, FIM portal, the password registration portal and the password access portal. So click on next, it is going to ask you for the database server name. So provide the database server name. So it is going to create a database called as a FIM service. The synchronized service will create its own database 
the film service will create its own database. So provide the mail server name. Management server. Enter the FIM reporting service manager management server. So you need to provide the, the server name where we installed the system center service management server. As we installed the system center service manager on this particular server itself, so I'm giving the same server name. So it's going to ask you for us generate a new SSL certificate. Generate a new SSL certificate. The common services. Enter the credentials of the account under which the FIM service will run. So we need to provide the FIM service account. ALV FIM. And the email address of this particular account. So enter the about the FIM synchronization server. So we install the FIM synchronization server on the same machine. So we are giving the same machine name. And the synchronization management agent account. You can see the FIM management agent account. So the management account which we created for the FIM service. So we are going to give this particular account. The FIM service address, the FIM portal name. So we are going to install the FIM portal on the same server. So I'm giving the FIM app one. So don't provide any HTTP or HTTPS. Just simply provide the server name. The SharePoint site collection, where we install the SharePoint portal. So I'm just giving the, the server name. So as we install the synchronization service, FIM portal, password registration portal, the reset portal, the service manager and SharePoint foundation on the same server. So for all this one, I'm giving the same server name in my environment. So password registration portal URL. The FIM portal will be running on a port number 80. So the password registration portal is a separate application again. So I cannot run this portal on a port number IT80 again. So as the registration portal, reset portal and FIM portal are on the same server. So we cannot run three different applications on the same port number 80. If you're installing a FIM portal on a separate server, FIM password registration portal on a separate server, FIM password reset portal on a separate server, then this can run on 808080. So here, I'm in a port number 8080 and for reset portal, I'm going to give 8081. So I'm going to use FIM portal 80 port number 8080 for password registration portal. Password reset portal is an 8081. So open the ports, these are all the ports. So grant authenticate users access the FIM portal. So if you don't enable this one, later we can give access. So until we give these permissions, the users cannot access the FIM portal. Enter the existing account under when the FIM password registration application pool will run in IAS. So we need the IAS application will be running on a SharePoint service account. So I'm giving the SharePoint service account. 
and the port number which is going to run called as an 8080 and I'm saying open a port in firewall. So if you're giving a separate name, so you can specify the binding name. I'm just giving a next. Enter the FIM service address for the password registration portal, the FIM server name and say that this URL will be accessible in the internal. So the password registration portal will be interacting with the FIM service using this particular name and which will be used in the intranet environment. For the password reset application pool, for the reset application again. So I'm giving a port number 8081. I've opened a port in firewall. Click on next. Specify the FIM service again and rest for the password reset portal. So the earlier we give it for the registration portal. Now we are giving for the password reset portal. Specifying that this URL is for the internal user purpose intranet network. So click on install. The installation of the FIM portal is completed. So the next thing which we look at called as in the, in the next video we will look for verifying the post implement uh, the FIM portal services performing the post installation activities. So watch in the next video.